Alrighty, now we're going to do the uh, isosceles and uh, weaver modified twice. Let the horses back there since I'm not shooting, it doesn't really matter. Um, let me aim this up just a little bit. Now, if you watch part one, you understand about the isosceles being the triangle, feet are squared. Again, when your feet are squared, you always still want that aggressive leaning, more weight on your toes so you can move. Now, one of the pros that people say about the isosceles is, if I'm in the isosceles and I'm drawing my gun in the isosceles, I can run quicker. My feet are sideways and I can move in quicker. Well, okay, I think I can move in the weaver stance just as quick. Now this is the weaver draw, and this is how I run. And I'm still in the weaver. So that argument doesn't really play to me as far as um, you know, the weaver is more, or the isosceles is better for moving. Can I move left or right? Yeah, I, again, I like this fighting stance. I like this 60-30, 70-30, 60-40, whatever you want to call it, 50-50. I like to be able to move. It just gets me into my fighting stance for my defensive tactics with my gun. If I need to block, if I need to hit, punch, drive, drive forward, I can still do all that because I'm in, if I'm like this, to me, this is more of a competition stance. This is what competitions do because it's stabilized, it's consistent, you always come up on target, you don't have to use your sights, you're pretty much there. So, which one do you want to choose? I think you ought to be kind of proficient with both. You ought to use both. You ought to see if they both work. I'm not going to use my sights and I'm going to draw my gun and I'm going to try to point right here in the camera and see how close I get with no sights. If I drop down on my sights, I'm a little low. But I'm still going to hit you in the head if I was shooting. So this is what I call point shooting. So if, if I grip this stance here, and this is kind of a modified isosceles and weaver. I've still got this arm bent. This arm is locked. And I'm pulling in. And I'm just coming up to where what we call point shooting. I'm looking over the sights. I never draw a sight picture. This is me grabbing a sight picture. You should be able to see front sight, rear sight in my eye. And I meant to go over picking out your dominant eye. I'll make another video on that, how to pick out your dominant eye. Um, people will see, if they know what dominant eye is, that I am left eye dominant and I draw a pistol on right hand. However, I shoot a rifle left handed because I'm left eye dominant. So, okay, I, and I'm kind of, I, I, I eat with my left hand, I write with my left hand, but I do everything else with my right hand. So. Thaw baseball, a bat, I draw my pistol. Almost everything's in my right hand except a couple things. So whether you want to call it good, bad, or indifferent, doesn't matter. You can adapt. If you notice, if both eyes are open and I bring this gun up, I'm looking over my sights and I'm kind of staring at you guys. Both eyes are open. If I close my, my eye, my sight is right on that thing. But if I switch my other eye, now it looks like I'm over here. And that's how we'll do a, a, a quick, uh, if you want to learn real quick on what right eye and left eye dominant, put your hands like that to where there's just a little bitty hole. Okay? And then I want you to keep both eyes open. And now with both eyes open, I've got the center of that lens in between that little hole. And now I'm going to close my left eye, and I still see the camera. When I close my right eye, I cannot see the camera. That tells me which eye is dominant. The one that you can see through that hole with both eyes open, when you close each eye, the one you can continue to see is the eye that's dominant. Now you can do the same thing with a thumb, there's other ways to do it too, but that's just a quick way on establishing. How does that matter? Well, if I draw a gun here and I'm using my right eye, I don't have to lean over as much. I'm using this eye over here. If I use this eye, my head drops a little bit. Does it matter? No. It doesn't matter if the gun is like this. I'm shooting a lens right now. If the gun is like this, Front sight, rear sight, I got a sight picture, I'm in the camera right now. Or if the gun's like this, front sight, rear sight, I've got a good sight picture, I'm in the camera. So it doesn't matter how the gun is, people get caught up, gun's got to be parallel, fingers got to be the... I'm not too concerned about all that. What I'm concerned about is are you safe? Are you blading your hand when you draw? Are you getting this hand over here and you have to come around it? Things like that are dangerous and bad. Do you have a good natural draw to where you've learned that this hand kind of stages right here? When I draw, this hand is in a ready position to defend, grab, whatever, 
but it's also going to be my second hand to move in once my barrel clears. So it happens pretty quick, but I am not blading my hand. Right? Wrong. See the difference? Right? Wrong. The little things like that, hopefully people are pointing out, you'll develop it naturally, you'll learn, you'll especially learn if you shoot your hand, or if I load you with blanks and I see you doing it, and I'll put blanks in your gun and go, okay, draw and shoot as quick as you can, just like you're doing, I want you to draw and shoot. Because a lot of times we're gonna do some drills to where we're drawing right here, bang, bang, bang. Because I want rounds down range, and when I'm this close to a target, I can put six rounds in you just like this. I can put six rounds in you like this. I can put six rounds in you like this. I can put six rounds in you like this. And I can put six rounds in you like this. But when I'm in a crisis situation, I want rounds on target. Bang, 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 bang. As soon as I get that gun out of the holster. And check my time here. Okay, I'm doing pretty good. So, two stances. Both can be modified. Both can be changed. The thing you don't want to do when you're drawing a gun is what's called the old cup and saucer. They used to teach when shooting on a range that you do the, this is a cup and your hand becomes a saucer and you set the cup in a saucer. And they used to teach to shoot this way. And is it a little bit stabilizing? It is, because if I can shoot one handed, this kind of just stabilizes it. It's not good, it's not helpful, it doesn't do enough and it's kind of counterproductive. I would almost rather you lock this arm down like this than to do the cup and saucer because this gives you support. And I'm not saying this is a good shooting stance. I'm just saying this is just as good as this. Hell, this is just as good as this. I don't like the cup and saucer. Most people don't teach it. A lot of inexperienced people, a lot of people that learn that way think this is the way to shoot. Put the cup in the saucer and shoot. This hand supports this hand. What this hand doesn't do is it doesn't stop this recoil from going up and down. Whereas if I take these four fingers and I line them up front here, now I stop that because I'm putting this hand here and I'm stopping that recoil. Ideally, when my gun recoils, if I got a loose grip, my gun's gonna go like this. And I don't want that. It takes a lot of time, this is called recovery time. This extends my time for second round on target. If I fire around, bang, and this come guns all the way back here, the travel time from here and all the way to here it's time, I could have got two more rounds off. Whereas if I go bang and I hold this and it only climbs here, my recovery and travel time is a lot less. Bang, I'm back on target. Bang, back on target. Bang, 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 bang. Versus bang, bang, bang. Big difference. So your, your goal in a stance is to prevent this recoil from one, the gun jumping back and flipping. We call it limp wristing. A person with an injury, uh, can't hold a gun. Limp wristing a gun will sometimes cause a jam because the gun is designed to operate in a pattern to where it spits around on. If it's coming back and you're going up and the round is coming out cockeyed and when it closes it may trap that ejecting round. It causes what's called a, a stove pipe or an, a, a round that's not fully ejected. But the stiffer this gun is, when this gun retracts and goes forward, that's when my gun's gonna operate the most effectively. So how do I keep this gun straight? I have a good solid stance and I have a good second hand to hold this sucker and it doesn't move. <coughs> Somebody's gonna complain that I need to get a timer because I can't see eight minutes, all right. So, uh, might as well have the horses in the background. <laughs> so, uh, let me get this thing just a little bit higher. So, I don't like the cup and saucer. So if I'm doing a cup and saucer, you hear me talk about cup and saucer, don't cup and saucer, you know that term. Again, terminology. Shooters that's been around for a while will say a lot of things that people don't like. Don't laser, don't sweep, control the gun, good grip, thumbs forward, thumbs crossed, thumbs up. Those are things that, that, that people will say, thumbs off the slide. If my, right now you notice my thumbs are not on the slide so I shoot, it may look like it's on the slide, but it's not. This would be a bad stance, because when this flies back, it's gonna throw my gun off, it's gonna slow it down. You don't want your thumbs on there. But, I, and I normally have a cross. I usually cross mine just naturally. Every once in a while, I'll do side by side. I rarely do up, but uh, I, I will normally do a cross. So when you see me drawing out here, you'll see just this little cross right here to where I get that over. And again, the only thing I'm doing is I'm taking this second hand 
and I'm, I'm supporting this hand. I want this hand, this grip. If this gun wasn't here and I was grabbing it with this hand, this is how I would grab it. Well, I grab it pretty much the same, except this hand is already here. So I grab it the same way, okay? My thumbs are gonna be crossed over. Grip, stance, okay? Follow through, side alignment, sight picture, trigger squeeze, nice and slow. I want you to start this front sight when I shoot this gun and tell me if the front sight moves. Not much. Front sight shouldn't be moving when I squeeze that trigger. Do it on sideways. Front sight shouldn't move at all. Trigger squeeze, very important. Um, isosceles stance, weaver stance, not sweeping the hand, using the second hand, learning where that hand is at when I draw, timing. This needs to come in with timing. When I draw this gun and this hand comes around, it has to be learned. It has to be instinctive. I can, I can not put my hand to way out here, but I still come in behind the gun. I come in in a way that I don't sweep. I don't cross this barrel. And I don't want to sweep somebody else. You'll see people, you see me when I lock this gun to the rear, a lot of times I turn it to the side. This I think is the best power way. I hold the gun with this hand and basically I push it down with my whip. To me, somebody that's weak, it gives them a lot of leverage. If you try to do it out here, or you're trying to do this, or you're trying to hold it down, sometimes that can get difficult, especially if you don't have the muscle memory or the timing to do that. This, this is a lot harder for me than this. This to me is very easy. So, when my gun is locked to the rear and I do a reload and I come back here, this, this gun doesn't release as well as it should when it doesn't have a mag in it, but uh, I need to fix that anyway. I think I put a gap, I put a, a, a cushion in there and ever since then it doesn't come back far enough to release this little pin right here. So when I pull this back, this should be dropping and it doesn't. See that? On my other guns, that will automatically. So now when I pull back, I've got to go ahead and do a help, give it a little thumb assist. But that's that's another issue. I'm like, I'm using this gun for demos right now anyway. All right. So if somebody says I want you to do an isosceles stance, you need to think triangle, three points, square with the target, drop a little bit, shift my weight a little bit forward, so I've got some good maneuverability. If you can't do this in your stance, you don't have a good stance. And a lot of people I see, they're standing like this. And I can't do that or I'll fall over. So you should be able to move and this moving is your cushioning for the gun. If this gun kicks, my feet aren't moving. I don't care how big, boom, boom, boom. I've got good footing because I've got my center of gravity a little forward. I'm squatted at the knees, I'm bent. Same way with isosceles. When I'm here, I've got a lot of room to move. I can move all the way around and still keep that gun on target and not worry about that gun coming off of that gun recoiling me. Recoil is all about uh, your body, your weight, transferring that weight. We're at 30 seconds and a half. So when this gun goes off, when this gun goes off, I want all this force coming back to be absorbed here, 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 any way I want to. I can absorb it on all three. Boom, boom. If it's a big gun, I can absorb it, but my stance doesn't change my grip doesn't change, and I'm ready for a second shot. Bang, bang, bang. I don't want the gun going here, because that's too much recovery. But that's okay. If it goes here, it's better it goes here, and I learn how to control that recoil and get back on target. Okay, I think we're pretty close to uh, 15 minutes there. Hopefully that discussed stance pretty good. I'm at 14 and a half. There's my boy's buddy out there. Buddy boy! <laughs> It's like, dude, I'm eating. <laughs> and there's Mr. T. All right. Isosceles. Remember triangle. Weaver. Remember, it's a push-pull. Uh, more of a fighting stance. One leg's forward, one leg's back. You're shifting your weight. 60-30, 60-40, 70-30, 80-20. Whatever you want to do, your weight is balanced between your two feet, not necessarily 50-50. On isosceles, you're kind of 50-50, but you're still leaning forward, and your weight is shifted to your toes to give you that ability to recoil and move back in case you're hit, bumped, 
uh, shrapnel's thrown in your face, etc. All right, we'll end that there. Buddy, must cheer, good boys.